So every year we look forward to getting invitations from different organisations or institutions and people and so on uh, to do live projects. So this year the Japan House contacted us saying that they're having an exhibition about the 1964 Olympics and they asked whether we'd be interested in contributing one of the models with using the original drawings and information photographs that they had. So we had conversations about that and we had said yes, we would be very interested in helping them with that sort of large scale 1 to 20 model. It's interesting to see the Japanese in the original drawings and try to interpret them into English. The biggest and main feature of this project was to show the architectural appreciation of the beams and the tower and the detailing was not on the original drawings, it's there for people's safety and in the model we wanted to put it there to sort of represent scale and give it a bit more um, life and character. The way that we assembled the, the model was through a flat pack system where all the pieces slotted into each other. People working in smaller teams working out how the drawings were or where the mistakes were or where things needed to be corrected and how translating that into physical making and cutting when they did prototypes, testing those ideas, testing variations and options was all part of that process. The practice has shown that this model making project was entirely challenging work. We kept on adjusting cutting angles, fixed details. Every project has its own set of challenges, but when it came to working on the Japan House project, problems turned into a resolution almost instantaneously. The team's dynamics in responding to any hiccups was simply impressive. Our main goal while working on the details was keeping the natural aspect of the wood in order to transmit this idea of honesty that the Brutalist Tower represents. We tested different ratios of varnish and calligraphy ink and toned two sides of the tower in a way that still reads the wood texture and highlights the grain. So working on the 3D prints for the balustrades and the spiral staircase steps was quite an interesting process. 3D printing itself has its own challenges and processes, uh, for example, what makes a print stable and how to adapt a design to 3D printing. MAISD, we like to make sure we have that broad spread of people from art backgrounds to design backgrounds to different experiences and levels so I think we have quite a few people this year who've had work experience so they were able to contribute a different type of knowledge about how you translate ideas and drawings into physical objects and other people who had backgrounds or skills whether it's about understanding drawings or using laser cutters before or these things. I have a background of making and manufacturing these helped me to better understand this process the difference between drawing something or thinking something and actually constructing it and putting it together is, is that translation from idea to some sort of reality. And this live project and this kind of construction has all those stages in it where from original drawing, translating to software, laser cutting, CNC, working out details and so on, construction details has all been part of that. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. The whole team was amazing, honestly. We all had our roles, and when we needed help from each other, we just reached out, and the communication was there. That was the most important part. That's what basically made this project happen. It was an unforgettable experience for all of us, had our own names inside. The construction, like an architect does and it will be remembered forever. Overall, it has been an incredible experience working with both Japan House and the UA colleagues. Ha ha ha!